2011 to 2015, we were fighting for our survival as a country, and every major project was checked and scrutinised to control costs and to deliver value for the people's money. This Fine Gael government seems to have adopted a Celtic tiger attitude to overspending. Just 10 months after telling us that the cost of the National Children's Hospital on the James uh, site was to be 938 million euros, Fine Gael is now telling us that the final cost could be 1.73 billion euro or more, nearly double the previous cost. And as Minister Harris has said, we're at the point of no return. There's a vast crater in St James's, and having dug themselves into this hole, the government seems no choice but to keep digging and try and find a way out. But the government's story does not stand up. We've been told that the civil servant appointed to the National Paediatric Hospital Development Board was there in a personal capacity. That's not true. The Department of Finance Circular 12 of 2010 sets out in detail that civil servants appointed to non-commercial boards must inform if a matter of serious concern arises. It is a requirement for civil servants on boards to ensure that their concerns are first raised at the board, noted in the minutes and actions agreed. The circular is crystal clear. The minister, and I quote, must be notified, that's the minister must be notified without delay where there are serious weaknesses in control that have not been addressed despite being drawn to the attention of the board or the chair and where there is a significant strategic or reputational risk to the body that is not being addressed. A government circular overrides any confidentiality imposed by a board itself. How is it possible that this did not occur in one of the state's largest developments? How is it plausible, as he has asserted, that the Minister for Public Expenditure was unaware of cost overruns until November last? Minister Harris has said he was aware of the costs as early as some of the costs as early as last August. Did it really take another three months for Minister Donoghue to be informed? Minister Donoghue either didn't know what was going on and did nothing, or else he did not know what was going on until November. It is unimaginable that the Minister for Public Expenditure was, com was kept in complete ignorance of public expenditure. Surely, as Minister overseeing public spending, he would have received monthly, if not weekly, updates on progress of a project of this scale and significance. So, Tishuk, why did it apparently take three months for the Minister for Health to inform the Minister for Public Expenditure about major cost overruns in the flagship project of the Department of Health? And how did you present, as a government, a budget to this House at the end of last year, which is already €100 million Euros short in terms of the capital programme presented to this House? For your question on this important issue of the Children's Hospital, um, this is a project that people have been talking about since the 1960s. If you go back in the Dáil record, the first time this was proposed was, was in 1962. There have been numerous failed attempts to deliver this project. This government will deliver this project. It's already under, it's already under construction. The satellite centre in Blanchestown is built and will open to patients this year, Tala next year, the main hospital in 2023. Decades of promises will actually be delivered by this government, something that the children of Ireland need and deserve. And I appreciate that it's right and appropriate to talk about the cost and the cost overruns, but we should never forget the value of this project. 380, 380 individual rooms for children who are sick, with space for their parents to stay overnight, proper infection control like we don't have now in our hospitals. A 60-bed ICU for children who are very sick uh, or need major surgery. Five MRI scanners and room for more, 20 ultrasound scanners, 22 theatres. Courtesy of allowing him to answer the question that he's been asked. Allow the teacher to answer. 22 theatres, Count Corla, where we now have 14, two cat labs, a 20% increase in inpatient capacity, a 25% increase in day capacity, a 50% increase in outpatient capacity. This is an enormous asset and something that, that children need. Uh, and I'm very disturbed to hear people in the opposition suggesting that this project should be suspended. Because by suspending it, because by suspending it, some of you have, some of you have. 
because by, susp- by suspending it, it will be further delayed and will cost, and will cost even more at Count Corla. And I am very disturbed to hear those calls from some elements of the opposition. Uh, but to, answer, to, to answer, the, answer the Deputy's question, but to answer, answer the but to answer the deputy's questions, um, the Minister for Health was first made aware of an issue around rising costs at the National Children's Hospital in August. He did the right and appropriate thing. He sought, he sought, full, he sought full information, facts and figures uh, before presenting that information to government. Uh, when I found out about it in November, around the same time as Minister of Public Expenditure, I responded in the same way as other people in this House. Uh, first, to disbelief struggling to believe how the prices had gone up again. Uh, and, second, and, and, second, and, second, and second, we did the appropriate thing which the government should do, uh, was to reject it and to say, go back, negotiate with the companies, get the figure down, find out if we can reduce some of the specifications in the hospital uh, to reduce the cost, find out if retendering was an option. All of those options were considered. Retendering would have delayed the project and probably saved nothing. Reducing the specifications of the project uh, would have been a, been a mistake because this is a 100-year project uh, and negotiations were carried out with the companies to bring that figure down as much as was possible. And that's the figure that was presented to Cabinet uh, in December and approved by Cabinet. Tishuk. Fine Gael, once upon a time, were concerned about fiscal prudence and about proper public financial management. Clearly no more. We all know the history and value of this project. We don't need to be lectured on that. You need to address the questions that are put to you. The notion, and you're not talking to somebody who doesn't understand budgets. The notion that the Minister for Health was aware of a significant overrun from August and didn't tell the Minister for Public Expenditure for three months. Meanwhile, there was a battle going on about current expenditure overruns that were in the national media. So 600 million of an overrun on the current side was a matter of battles, but nobody mentioned that, by the way, there is maybe 400, 500 million overrun on the capital side as well. But nobody even looked for months. That is not credible. And the net point is that the Minister for Public Expenditure had his own man on the board with a, a responsibility, according to the government's own circular, to report to him. Did this happen? And if not, why? To clarify once again that the Minister for Health was first made aware uh, of rising costs and escalating costs at the Children's Hospital project back in August. He did the appropriate thing. He did the appropriate thing, Ken Corla, which is to ask for all the facts and figures uh, before um, uh, going, going to government with the issue. And it took, and it took, it took, and, I, and, I, and I've give, given you a, a, an, an insight into the process. It took several weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, three months, whatever it was, uh, for that figure, for that figure, that figure to be, for that figure to be, for that, for that, for that. Uh, Honourable. Uh, look, mutual, we're supposed to show some level of mutual respect. If you ask the Taoiseach a question, at least let him give the reply. I, I, I'm happy to reply further. Yes, go ahead. Okay. As, I, as I said earlier, the Minister for Health was informed of rising costs and escalating costs at the project back in August. He did the appropriate thing, which is to look for facts and figures, to have it scrutinised, to drill down into it, to see if the figure st- st- stuck up and to see if he could bring them down as much as possible, and informed um, me and the Minister of Public Expenditure of this uh, in November, uh, and the same scrutiny uh, was, then, was then applied. Uh, in terms of corporate governance, corporate governance has changed quite a lot since 2010, and corporate governance and corporate rules do not override government circulars. And if somebody's on a board, their fiduciary responsibility and their legal responsibilities are to that board. And the correct line of accountability is from the chairman of that board. Uh, Quiet, from the please. chairman of that board uh, to the from the chairman of that board to the line minister, uh, not individual board members acting in the, on their own part. Deputy Catherine Connolly, please.